Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and in this video, I wanted to take a look at mono compatibility. You will often hear that it's a good idea to check your mono compatibility while mixing, and that you want to make sure that your mix is mono compatible. And what this means is that when you convert your track to mono, or when your track is played back in mono, it still sounds pretty good. And to do this, what you want to do is merge your master track to mono. So in FL Studio, I can do this just by taking the stereo separation knob and changing it to 100% merged. How you do this in your digital audio workstation may be a little bit different. So here's the song that I'm going to be checking the mono compatibility of. And you can hear that when I convert it to mono, it sounds a bit different. You know, it's not going to sound as good uh, no matter what, just because, you know, stereo sound sounds a lot better than mono sound. At least to me, it does. So don't be concerned if your song doesn't sound quite as good when you play it back in mono. You know, you really want to just listen for big problems. So... If you listen to when this track drops, you'll hear that it's a very busy mix. Not because there's a ton of different stuff going on, but because the kick takes up a ton of frequencies, and then you also have a screech sound, and you know there's just a lot going on in the frequencies. But it sounds all right. And now if I convert that to mono, you'll hear it sounds pretty different. You know, it sounds all right, except for the screech lead sound kind of uh, gets really, really quiet and it kind of gets lost in the mix. You know, you can still hear it, but just barely over that kick. And so that is the kind of thing that you'll be watching out for when you are checking your mono compatibility. You know, any kind of phase cancellation issues, and that's a decent example of a phase cancellation issue, or any sounds that sound just kind of weird or bad, or maybe any sounds that just clash as well, depending on how strict you want to be about your mono compatibility. Now, most of the time, depending on what you've done, you should be pretty okay and not have any major issues. But depending on the kinds of techniques and effects and all that that you have used, there may be some things that you would want to touch up. And so, I can't really tell you how to do this in any specific way, you know, it just comes down to finding out where you have mono compatibility issues and then correcting them by making changes to what you've done in order to get the stereo image that you did regarding those sounds. So, for example, if you have used the Haas effect on a clap and it sounds really weird and bad when you play it back in mono, you might consider changing the time of the delay on that Haas effect and seeing if you can get it to sound a little bit better in mono. Now, you're probably not going to get it to sound perfect in mono, depending on the sound that you want, because the whole point of the Haas effect, the whole reason it works, is because of those phase differences between the left and the right channel, caused by that delay. So you might have a hard time getting it to sound perfect if you've been using that Haas effect, but you can definitely get it to sound better with certain delay times versus other delay times. And, you know, if you've used a phaser or a flanger on a sound, and it sounds weird when you play it back in mono, you might try to see if you can get it to sound any better while keeping a decent stereo width by adjusting the stereo phase parameter. Or if you've done doubling, where you have two sounds panned opposite that are similar, like two recordings of the same lyrics, 
you know, you might try adjusting the time of one of those and see if that helps at all. Or if you just have two separate sounds clashing that were originally panned opposite, you might see if using some EQ will help to have them not clash. So, you know, those are just a few examples and there are a ton of different things that can mess up your mono compatibility. And it's really up to you to figure out what's causing those issues and to see whether or not you can fix them. Now, mono compatibility is most important in the bass because many stereo systems will merge the bass to mono in order to play it through a subwoofer. So, you know, if you're going to check any mono compatibility issues, make sure the bass is good. And other than the bass, you know, it's not super, super important depending on how strict you want to be. Just, you know, most of the time you would probably want to avoid the phase cancellation such as is happening in this example here. But, you know, if things sound a little bit weird, you just have to decide, is it worth it to try and get that mono compatibility to be a little bit better? So I definitely say don't obsess with it, you know, worry primarily about major issues such as that face cancellation or, you know, anything that sounds really weird, any main sounds that sound really weird. And as a beginner, it might be best to ignore mono compatibility for now and focus on getting a good stereo mix to keep things a little bit more simple until you're more comfortable with the mixing process. So how strict do you want to be about your mono compatibility is up to you. And hopefully this video was at least a little bit helpful in giving you an idea of, you know, the kinds of things that you might need to do and the kind of things you should watch out for.